Hello and welcome to Roll For It for episode 4, the final episode of Fablecraft Vacna's Awakening. We we are here and we're sad, but it's going to be cool, I'm sure. Hopefully we don't all die. Um, we are sponsored by Riftweaver, the creators of Fablecraft, which is an upcoming uh, tabletop RPG, uh, virtual tabletop amalgam. We've talked about it uh, plenty at this point, but it's just all the things at once. It, 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 you can play it online with your friends. It's got it's got an inbuilt uh, voice and video calling. Um, it's got its own setting. It's got tons of art. It's already got a bunch of lore stuff that you can find on the website right now. Um, there's plenty of places to, to, to look at all these cool things about it, and you'll you'll hear about it more as they keep working on it. The Kickstarter was a massive success, um, so it's we're just excited to see uh, just how much cool stuff happens. But yeah, it'll be coming um, soon TM to, uh, you know, to PCs and, and tablets and probably other things as well. Um, we're very excited to, uh, to, to see the, the final product. Because we're playing the, the super early, like, you know, prototype version. That they're testing out and, and proving the concept um, and, and showing off. And uh, it's, it's really cool. We've been having a ton of fun with it. I'm sure you've seen. Um, yeah, let's get into the final episode. <laughs> All right, we shall begin then. Welcome to episode four, the finale of Vecna's Awakening. Shellfish gambling. The camera begins in the mountain tops of the highlands where our party discovered the first piece of the glowing stone they believe to be the vestige of Vecna. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to cough. <laughs> Then through the long meadows, where the follows brought them in with the second piece, swallowed by a karma cat. And deep within the wild woods, where, lives, where lives were almost lost, and some were, as the third fragment, fragment was found. The camera winds through the serpentine vines of a briar until it reaches an opening, the bright pink sand of the coral coast blinding the party. And is there any conversation as you come through this waypoint that Teshwin had created, and now you see the blinding uh, sand, pink sand kind of hitting you as the sun is setting? I think immediately, because I know Teshwin had said, like, it's like you get a full deep breath when you come through the waypoint. And I feel like you smell this, like, sea air, that salt and just warm humidity kind of feeling and I immediately like break from them and run to the edge of the water and just start splashing kind of the water with my feet. Yeah, you hear the waves kind of crashing up against the shore and you feel the the water hit your face. It's nice and cool. And um, if you lick your lips, it's like a little salty flavored. Welcome to the Coral Coast. This is where I grew up. I'm so excited that you're here. I come through slightly after everyone else, and I'm just like, oh, uh, maybe this isn't any better. You get used to it. All right. Why are you suddenly so loud? Why is this place so loud? Is that music? Yes, it's music and the beach. You will always hear waves. There's usually music everywhere you go. There's, there's lots of things to do here all hours of the day. It's kind of... Um, you wake up at midnight and you want to do something, you can do something. It's not really quiet. It's not supposed to be. I think it's beautiful. And when he's saying that, he's just looking directly at Mia, not even the surroundings or anything like that, just Mia as he says that. Do I notice? I think it's pretty clear, yeah. She catches your eye and smiles very big at you. And just almost saying directly to you, I'm excited for you to meet my family. <laughs> we're, we're going to meet your family? Uh, Why wouldn't you? Let's not get too sidetracked with reunions. We, we do have a mission to do. Don't forget. Yes, yes. I have a lot of siblings. There's a chance we could run into any of them. Okay, hold on. First off, where are we going? Second off, where is the vestige of Vecna? Third off, where are we? As Teshwin says that, 
Mia becomes a bit distracted as she notices a decorator crab and a familiar treasure hunter, Talia Herring, fighting over what she can only make out as possibly an antique treasure. How do you react to that, Mia, as Teshwin's asking these questions and then you're like, behind them, you can see these this decorator crab and this other person kind of like fighting over this item. As soon as I see Talia, I, my eyes kind of light up and I smile. And then I kind of get that rush of like, oh, I've been there. I've fought decorator crabs for things. So I immediately go, Talia, come help. And I just start jogging over to Talia to help, I guess, fight this decorator crab. <laughs> decorator <laughs> crab. Fight the decorator crab. We've been uh, here for you... 15 seconds and she's running away. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Nice I, for one, enjoy yeah. watching her go. Okay. All right. Okay. You know what? <laughs> Take the things out of your pockets and just give them to me, because this is getting ridiculous. What's getting ridiculous? Whatever you've got going on and whatever he's got going on is getting ridiculous. What? Oh, for star's sakes. You kind of just like when you're frustrated. <laughs> Did you know that, Teshwin? This is a Vacna thing. That's what this is. It's another one of those Vacna things. Am I things. not allowed to appreciate the beauty of my friends and my companions? You give it to me right now, boy. I'm fine. I've got this. You know what? Don't worry. Th oh, he's acting a little I weird. I throw my hands up in the air and I turn around to huff, just like sand flowing all around me and just walk in the direction of this decorated crab. All right, Mia, you're already on your way. As this conversation between Teshwin, Jara, and Drak is coming to an end, is Teshwin Drak. kind of. <laughs> Drak, sorry, Zinkana. <laughs> Zinkana is, comes to an end as uh, Teshwin puffs and puffs off. Mia, you run over to your friend, Talia, who you, you've known for a long time, and she's kind of like pulling at this, and she is holding on with one hand to the item and she kind of waves over at you very like excitedly. Um, and she's just like, yeah, I'm fine, um, Mia. It's nice to see you again, but like me and this decorator crab, we've got a history. We're gonna be all uh, right. You don't want me to help? Like I can help you pull or something. I don't know. I know these can be feisty. Yeah, sure. Um, and she kind of like moves this, now that you're closer, it's like a horn. And she like moves her hand further down on the horn and it's kind of like tugging at it. And this decorator crab's got like its pincers, like holding it and still pulling on the other end. It's pretty big horn. It's like, you know, the size of your torso. This is such a good find. Yeah, right? I found like a few of them along the coast. I wonder what they were used for before. Oh, I don't know. You should get these appraised after. Well, if I'm this gonna... little thing ever lets go of it, come on, man. This is mine. And I'm gonna start little... helping pull. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of Roll the one me... of the edges of this horn. Roll me an easy athletics check. Oh boy. If I fail this. <laughs> oh, did it go? I don't see it. Let's try again. Oh, there we go. Hey. Epic success. Epic success. All right, what happens? I think just because Talia and I've done this so many times over the years, it's just like we have a system down. So as soon as I grab one side of the horn, she has the other. We just kind of look at each other and give a nod. And there's like a way to disarm the decorator crab to kind of catch it off guard because it's pincers open at just the right moments. And so she pulls, I pull, and then the decorator crab just kind of realizes it's not holding it anymore. And... Uh, we have the horn now and the crab's just like pin <laughs> using its pincers at us, kind of like glaring if crabs could glare and then slowly backs <laughs> itself up into the ocean. I don't think it backs itself all the way to the ocean because this, okay. this decorator crab has a thing with Talia. It, it kind of, it does back up a little bit. It's almost because of force because it was pulling so hard on it. And as soon as it let go, it like flings backwards a little bit. So it looks like it's going into the ocean, but then it scurries quickly, like sideways all the way back up to you both. And Talia's like, Come on, man, just chill. It's ours. We got it fair and square. 
I like to think that we hold the horn up a little bit so we can reach it. <laughs> um, and, and it's trying to like it's trying to like jump, but it doesn't really have like a high jump. So it's just like hopping up a little bit off the ground, and you both are like holding it up. At this point, this is when you arrive, Tashwin. What are you people doing? Hold on. Talia's got a thing with this crab. We gotta like talk it down. Listen, little crab, there are many more opportunities for you to find better treasure. Like, just think of this as an opportunity. You may have lost this one, but now you can go out and find something better. It kind of like wobbles back and forth and is still kind of jumping. And then uh, Talia lets go of the horn and you're just like holding it by yourself, uh, Mia. And she turns around and like offers her hand to you. Tashwin is like, I'm Talia Herring. If I don't sell it, you don't need it. This is my friend Talia. We grew up together. Mia's what is super cool, as you probably already know. She kind of like won the rippies. Yeah, they know. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, Hold on. everyone knows. I like um I walk to the ocean a little bit. I like just grabs in my hand and I rub the inside of my cheek with it and I'm going to speak try and speak to this crab. Oh, he's not really like a friendly person, is he, Mia? As no, I tell I mean, you like leans forward to, towards you. He's got a problem. I mean, I think it's just an attitude thing. I don't know what happened in his life, you know. <laughs> Alright, Tashwin. Um, before we get to you trying to talk to the crab, Jara and Zingana, not Drag. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. Why I, said. I think it's because Bentham has Jara in his name first on Zoom, and you have Drag on your name first. That's fair. So I, I was... can switch it. <laughs> An NPC going... named Drag, who was involved in previous conversations, suddenly vanishes. I feel like it's that a very would be a good NPC name. name, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Jara and Zingana, what are the two of you doing as you're kind of like standing off to the side watching the two of them? Play with a crab from the distance of what it looks like for, for you. So I I feel like probably I'm aware of Zingana acting weird and Zingana's aware of me acting weird. We're just not aware of our own problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair. It's like, you have been acting a little bit strange recently. And Zingana's watching um, Mia and uh, what's their friend's name? Uh, Talia. 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 So just kind of watching me and Talia, and I think Tashin as well, and it kind of goes, huh, what, you say something? Something is up with you, I think it, could it be, that doesn't make sense, I don't know, you just, just stay focused, okay? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really focused. You are not focused at all. Like, waving my we hand should, in front should... of his eyes. <laughs> hey, hey, we should catch up with, with. Mia. Yeah, come on. They seem to and have sorted out Tashwin this business ends. with the crab thing, at least. He's focused yeah. on something. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jara, Jara and Zingana slowly walk forward as um, Jara's kind of shaking their head and Zingana's looking um, towards Mia. All right, Tashwin, you go up, grab the sand. Let's see how this works. This is going to be an easy roll for you. Last time this didn't work so well, so we'll see. It's true. Come on. Oh, oh no bloody hell. way. Did you see what it oh did though? God. It flickered. It teased too. No so way. <laughs> Tashwin Epic just value. cursed. What happened? I had like rub some of the seawater on the inside of my cheek and then he, and I say, you know what? And I just spit it out. Why am I even trying? What's the point? What's the point of any of this? We're just driving ourselves mad over a bunch of small little crystal things. Clearly, they're not meant to be together, by the way, because they've been split up into four different places for a reason. And now, now I'm trying to convince a, ca a crab that I don't even know to give you a horn. I don't know you either. Nice to meet you, by the way. In this bloody sand infested, I hate sand. Talia leans into you, Mia, and is like, <laughs> Man, your friend really needs to take like a chill pill. Yeah, I. Yeah, this usually usually works. I'm gonna walk over to you. I'm gonna take you by the shoulders and turn you around to look at the ocean. Just look. Just don't think about anything. Just look ahead of you. I'm getting very overwhelmed. I know. I. 
I'm excited that you're here. I'm sorry you hate sand so much. I think it's beautiful. Just it's got so boots. many... Uh, it's got a lot of purposes, and if anything, it'll exfoliate your feet. Yeah, man. Like, take off your boots. Feel the sand in your toes. That's what it's all about. I'm calming down a little bit, but not calm enough for that. Here, maybe try this. And she hands you kind of like a little... It's like a shell, but it has like something in it, and it's got a cover on it. So if you take the cover off, it's like got liquid in there. What yeah. is it? It's just, you know, something to ease your pain. It's kind of like, um, <coughs> what do you call those things? Aphrodisiac? Did somebody say aphrodisiac? <laughs> 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 Yeah. I'm Talia. Talia Herring. If I don't sell it, you don't need it. Noted. I'm Zingana. Zingana Osterborn. Well, it's Zingana. To nice meet to meet you. you. Nice to meet you too. Are you so friends I'm guessing with... you all are friends? Oh, yeah. Me and I go back. And yeah, we grew up together. Oh. And also, yeah, so this is Jara. This is Teshwin. This is Zingana. And uh, we are, you know, after I won the Rippies, they sent me to go do this quest and that this is our last stop oh well you made your way back home that's nice yeah i have to i kind of look over at jara i have to try to not get distracted well that's hard it's kind of beautiful here everything is distracting that's like the whole deal with coral coast obviously life's about getting distracted i know when in, you're on a uh, uh, quest of incredible importance that we have been selected for. Oh. I don't know. I'm you know kind of enjoying the distractions here. Has anyone, He's in Ghana gets it. Has anyone given a thought to the fact that these things are clearly a lot more dangerous than we were led to believe? Hey, come back. The crab is like gra grabbed hold of like a bag that Talia had and is like trying to pull it. Uh, is that your fifth bag? Yeah, and this stupid de decorator crab keeps trying to, like, take my stuff. We've been on this coast all morning, and he keeps following me around. It's really all annoying. Right. Let me just give it one more shot. Hold on. And I take another small amount of seawater, rub it on the inside of my cheek. I'm going to try this one more time. <laughs> Please let this work. Oh, my God. <laughs> Easy still. Or has this gotten a hard? Yeah, it's it's still easy. It's not a hard thing to do. <laughs> but it might no. be for oh. you. Oh, Ooh, finally close. a success. <laughs> All right, friend. Why are you constantly trying to steal her stuff? You're talking to the crab. Yeah. Yeah, the crab uh, is like pulling at this bag and Talia is holding the other end of it. And it's like. Whoa, dude. I can totes hear you right now. That's weird. This is my bag. Well, it was maybe not... not the bag, but the stuff that's in it is mine. See All this right. beach? This is my home, bro. So what he's saying is that this is his home, and thus you are taking his belongings away with you. And that's why this he's This is my at home, it. and uh, these belong to my people. All right. So, Mr. Do you have a name, my friend? And I speak to the crab. I don't know. She keeps calling me Krabby. All right, so Mr. Krabby. Krabby. Wonderful. How about this? Both of you have lay claim to this plot of land. All right. So how about in return for the things she takes, she gives you something back. So what would you like back that's not already here? Well, it has to be something super cool. Because here's the thing. Only the coolest child leader gets to be the leader. So, like, for me to become the leader of the decorator crabs, I gotta have the coolest decorations. You feeling me, brah? Yeah, I seem to understand you. Despite the fact that even though I can speak your language, you're speaking a language I still don't understand. So what he's trying to say is that he needs to dress up. You need to give him something for dress up if you want the stuff from this place. Because otherwise, he'll he never like, be leader of the decorator crabs. Won't the cloth just, like, fall off? Won't he, like, claw it and slice it well, open? I mean, 
There's other things. Uh, how about like fancy little metal pieces? What about mosaic this, tiles? The stones from the inlands. You can't go in there. There's the purple yeah, ones and the blue like ones. Stones. I guess we could bring some of those back. How would you feel about little shiny stones? You can embed them in your shell. You look very shiny uh, and you look unique. I gotta have big shiny stones. You see, the leader got us to have the coolest decorations and. I mean, little things aren't as cool as big things. All right, all right. Drift. Let's not be a size crap. But also, if you put, put them in like fancy different unique constellations, it'll look much better than just one big old thing stuck on your head. I don't know, man. I don't know if the other crabs will will feel that way about it. We're look, gonna make the last you... leader that got chosen. The reason why he got chose was because he had like this sick glowing thing on his back, but then some human took it. Um, they were on the coast earlier. All right, so here's a couple options. One, you make him look very pretty right now as best as you can. Or two, you find a glowing thing that's somewhere on this beach and we give it to him because that's apparently how the last leader got elected, but then some human. Glowy thing? I don't know. Well, we think. I mean, yeah, things, I know what he's talking about. If these um, things like collecting shiny rocks, we're looking for a shiny rock. Can you not talk about that right now? Because if you get him distracted, suddenly, not only will he have the bag, he'll have your things too. Well, Talia, do you know about the... Here? What do you mean? Well, Does it look like... It like um, I just frantically look um, from Jara to... Zingana. Will you show will you show her one? One of the stones? I think when you look to Zingana, you notice that Zingana hasn't taken their eyes off of you its entire conversation. And just goes, yeah, 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 of course. And will reach into their pouch and pull out a vestige. This, right? Yeah, it was totally like that. It was a little smaller, but really similar to that. Where Maze is it? Took it well, see, Maze had it. And actually, if you guys can help me, that would be sweet. Because um, Maze and I kind of had a plan to do this like super wicked trip. We were going to like do like a beach party on our boat and sell stuff. It was going to be so cool. But he's been acting really strange lately. And now he's in the high tide beach house trying to win back some stupid stone. That looks a lot like that one. I tried to give him one of my stones I had, and I even told him we'd find another uh. one, but he's like soups dead set on this one. Do you think you could convince him to like hurry up? Did really you weird. So, so, so he found the stone and he's gambled the stone away and, okay. Which is Mass really doesn't weird. gamble though. Yeah, oh, yeah, he doesn't gamble. He likes to drink a lot, but like doesn't really gamble. So it's been a little weird. We kind of lost like all the potions on our boat now too. He's pretty much given up everything over this you see, stupid stone. Really? A surprisingly suddenly changing positions over a stone, maybe getting angry, maybe getting a bit lustful, maybe getting a bit hungry. Wouldn't know anything oh, about no. that. He hasn't really been hungry or angry. Just mostly like, you know, really wants the stone. Greedy. Great. Uh, hold on. Let me just deal with the crab first. I pull out a couple star fragments. I promise you, I will get Talia to bring you more shiny things, but for now, these are fragments of actual stars that come from the grasslands. You won't find anything like it here. Please just take these Whoa, things and leave the dude. horn in the back alone. I've never seen anything like that. That's sure to get me, leader. Why don't you pop those bad boys on here? And like, he like lets go of the bag and like shows his back to you. I gently place them in a star formation, like I pick five and make them into another five pointed star on his back. Yeah, they like kind of suction into like this gross goop that's on his back. Um, and he's like. Yeah, man, this is going to be wicked. Do you think they'll make me the leader? And he like shakes his little shell at you. Oh, yeah. If I was a decorator crab, I'd be falling all over you. Sweet. Thanks, brah. Look, you got my back. I got your back. And he like looks like he's concentrating really hard. He like clenches his little crab little, like, claws and like crunches down. And then it almost looks like 
he's pooping or something and like a shell pops out and he like scurries off to the side and is like that's for you brah if i become the leader i'll make sure to credit you and then he Thank scurries you. off into the ocean and there's just like this shell on the ground i uh i take a clean piece of cloth place it over the shell and just gently pick it up from the cloth okay you would see Mia's demeanor is completely changed. Like from her, oh yeah, we're back to very serious, like discomfort. And immediate when Teshwin's doing this, turning to Talia, where's Maze right now? He should not have started gambling. Why did he start gambling? I don't know. He's never gambled before when I've seen him, but uh, he was in the, the depths. Tide. Oh, he went into sorry. the high tide beach house. He's been there all morning. We're supposed to Wait. leave like two hours ago. And now the I sun is setting. I wouldn't plan on your beach. Pick another day for your, your boat ride. Um, yeah, I'm gonna... it's fine. We'll ride the wave. Talia, I'm going to go talk to Maz. All right. I tried to convince him. I don't think you're going to find any other shiny stone that's going to get his jock's going like that one. He shouldn't have started gambling. Come on, we need to go. Yeah, that, that's... Needs that's away. good. like to see you being serious. All right, I just see you give. guys. It's nice to meet you. I tell you, I'll, I'll talk to you later. And I just start yeah, you like guys purposefully... Come down by our ship. We're totally going to have a sweet party. Singana kind of like is walking backwards to looking at Talia and goes, yeah, it was great meeting you, Talia. And like, again, keeps kind of watches Talia for a bit before turning and following Mia. Perfect. I love that. And I, I'm party just... Make oh, sorry. No, you go ahead. I was going to say, I was like, I just, I'm purposely walking and I give Jara a side eye at, at the comment of me being serious. <laughs> I like it. As the party makes their way to the high tide beach house, they can hear the energetic buzzing party vibes as they pass by houses over the water, dance and music performances along the docks, wave chasers fishing and reeling in colorful fish, and a variety of ships in different sizes and shapes. The camera zooms in on the large beach house, five stories high, built into the side of one of the largest corals the camera pans down over ships docked to its side and the party as they stand in the entrance. What do you do and like, how are you guys going about finding Ma Maze? Uh, I would immediately scan the room to look for Maze. And since I know who it is and I kind of grew up with him, I would assume I could pick him out of the crowd. Yeah, I think that will be, it will be an easy look around for you as you're trying to to find maze okay so perception yeah i would say okay. perception unless there's something else you think would apply but that mm. seems uh seems possible. like the best bet okay <gasps> oh yeah Epic success. Yeah, back in our hometown let's go i know <laughs> <laughs> Epic success. And of course, you know Maze. You know what he looks like. You've been you've grown up with Talia for so long. You find Maze slumped over a table, the dreads of their hair flopping over the side of their face, making their brightly colored water-like tattoos more visible, and their beard untamed. Their blue tank top looking as though it hasn't been washed in a few days. You hear him say under his breath, Come on, Doc. I know you won the stone fair and square, but let me... Let me have one more try. I gave you my last trinket. That's all I got. Do you intervene or do you let them continue to converse? I, I'm no stranger to this place. And so as soon as I see... Uh, it's Maz, right? Is that how I say it? Yeah. Okay, Maz. Maze. I just... Maze. Maze. Okay. I um, just start walking over with purpose and sit down next to next to him. What are you doing? 
Mia, it's nice to see you again. It's been a while. I normally see you with all your siblings running around town. Um, there's a few things. Seems like you have, uh, you found something that is important to my group and I, and I point to everybody. Um, this is Teshwin, Jara, and Zingana. What are you doing you here? Do. Why are you why are you here specifically? Why are you gambling? Man, I wasn't planning on being here, but like I started winning a lot and then now Doc's got my stone, so I need to get it back. You know you're like a second father to me. Especially you know my father. Oh, Don't Mia. do this to Talia. I'm not doing anything to Talia. Talia's on the beach, picking up treasure. You know, she loves doing that. I look over, she, he was talking to someone named Doc. Yeah, Doc's kind of like standing um, in front of, on the other side of the table. Or like this, there's like a table and it's clear that there's like a game that's happening here now that you're actually looking at Mia. Initially, you were kind of focused on Maze and what Maze was doing, but now that you're looking, there's like a group of people all kind of having conversations. They're like shouting at each other. Uh, Doc is like this kind of mask built, but like very feminine, like facial features. And they have like a big water um, symbol down their arms. And uh, they're, they're kind of picking up shells and rearranging them. I, I look from Maze to Doc, and I kind of glare at Doc a bit. What did you do with the stone? Whoa, chill out. It's all right. Stone is fine, but it's mine. I look to the group over, over my sh shoulder, and um, I think it's the last piece and I just want to get it now. And I want I want to be done with this. Agreed. Well, you're not like as obsessed with this thing as Maze is, are you? Because like, y'all need to chill out. It's going to be fine. Look, I'll let you try to win it back. What you say? Come on. A little Why? game of shells? Eh? Why does everyone in this place seem like they're trying to sell me something? It's part of the economy here, Teshwin. They are. A lot I of us see. are doing our best to survive here, and this place is a pit that will take away locals and tourists alike, and their soul will leave them and they will never be the same. Oh, come on, Mia. Why you gotta have such a grumpy, you know, like take on things? It's you know why, it's lovely, Doc. it's full of life. Everyone's kind of, you know, like a vibe. Doc, you are more than familiar with why. Look, you can't harp on stuff like that. Some people just aren't saveable, Mia. Well, you certainly do not help. Look, I'm just trying to make sure everyone's entertained. It's not my fault your father comes in here. You've mm -hmm. entrapped her father. I haven't done anything to her father. Her father is a free man, just like every other person here in the Coral Coast. I, like, pick up Maze by the shoulder. Does he look free to you? I'm free, man. It's fine. I'm... He kind of pushes you off of him as you're trying to, like, lift him up. Zingana... Doc said you'd give me one more round, so, you know... A free round? I can't say no to that. Zingana will approach. I think at least most of us have kind of like a few feet behind while Mia's taking this on. But Zingana will approach and stand kind of still behind Mia, but to the side of her as well, and kind of lean in to Doc and just say, I'll take you up on the offer. See? People Zingana. want to be part of it, Mia. Come on, take a seat. What'd you say your name was? Zingana. Zingana. Nice to meet you. I'm, uh, I'm Doc. They call me Doc. 
Have a seat. There's drinks See? over there. Have you ever played shells before? No, this is my first time actually. Um, All right. Well. Any tips and tricks I need to know? Well, Don't lose. Here's how it works, and then you can figure out what tips and tricks you need. But you know, master doesn't share their uh, tips and tricks necessarily. So I got three shells. Uh, Doc kind of lifts up each shell so you can like look inside, see that they're shells. Lets you touch them, like offers for you to do. You put your hand in there. Yep. You can feel yep, they're just shells. Um, kind of rearranges them, then lifts up like a pearl, and it is a beautiful pearl. It's got that pearlescent sheen to it, but it's like this deep coral color, and they're like. All you gotta do is figure out which shell the pearl is under. Oh my Think god! You can do that. Three card Monty. <laughs> I can do Think that. You can do it. I mean, I'm, I'm, this is I'm new to this, so all right, I'll figure all right. it out. He will trick you, Zingana. You need to be careful. He... They have ways of uh, messing with your head. I won't trick you. And I'm a she. But anyways, you know. They start, like, rubbing their hands, and they pick up the shells, and they show you once more. And then they start placing each of the shells. They grab the pearl, and they show you the pearl. They put it under one shell. They show you. And they make it very clear. And then they start spinning the the shells around really quickly like and, and while they're doing this they're having conversation with you zingana so you've never played shells before no i haven't um not really a thing i've had a chance to do in the highlands oh you're from the highlands yeah solid what do you guys do for fun there oh uh when we're not trying to or when i'm, I'm not trying to scrounge stuff to survive um just playing around with some friends from a i mean part of a uh, kind of after school club of sorts nice bro seems like similar vibes to here just a uh, different scenery well which shell do you think it's under i think as this conversation is happening uh like so far jar has been quietly like arms folded furious just at everything and everyone um, sort of like leans in close to Teshwin and is like, so, Zagana loses, we're just taking the stone, right? I'm trying to keep an eye on these hands of hers. Hold on. Uh, I'd like to keep an eye on her hands this entire time to see if she's planning any dastardly tricks. Yeah. With her finger. Um, as, as you're doing that, Jara like cracks his knuckles and with each crack there's like a little spark of magic. <laughs> I think it's going to be... You are paying attention closely with it. Um, so I would say this is going to be a challenging one, and this will be a perception check. I can do that. Fingers crossed, everyone. <laughs> nice. You're watching as they're doing this, and you're looking out. You're trying to see if like they're doing anything tricky or something of that sort, and you do notice something. As they're talking with uh, Zingana, they're they're moving the shells around, and they they are trying to distract Zingana. But not only are they trying to dis distract Zingana, there's something strange about the shells. But you can't really put, you know, a, a thing on it because it's not like a manual thing necessarily. It's like something is off. And with that success. You think about the shell that you actually were given by the decorator crab that you think like the decorator crab pooped out or something like that, but it's looks kind of similar. As Doc asks Zingana under which shell is it, I take out the shell in my pocket, wrapped in cloth, place it down, shell side up. How much do you want to bet underneath here? Zingana, what were you going to do as well? While this yeah, is so Zingana's lying. He's played this game before. He's not a fool. Uh, ah. he's, he is a thief. He lies and cons people all the time. Um, he's probably been the one to play this game with other people and get money out of it. Um, I would like to use, and I don't know if I can use this. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I would like to use Case the Joint um, to figure out where this sh uh, where this pearl is and if it's not in either of these shells that on its own is enough of a confirmation um 
But basically, the, this is what it is. You can tell me if it works for this. Um, gain knowledge about the location with insight. Get a sense of the room's layout, guards, secret doors, and passages. Would that be? Would that help me? I here? don't think it applies to this, but we'll we'll kind of take some liberty with it because I think okay. that it just sounds fun. So yeah, um, we'll roll for fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, for this, it's going to be difficult. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Nailed Success. it. Nice. Yeah. Walk me through what you think, uh, where you think, which one, what you think is going on here? Um, what I think is going on here? Because what yeah. Drak thinks is going on here, Drak is not as smart as Ingana. Um, <laughs> what does Ingana think is going on? <laughs> yeah. I think... And I'll tell with... you what really is going on because he does figure it out. Okay. Um, Zingana, I think in the Highlands, magic isn't as, it's not frowned upon, but it's much less used, at least very in public. So I think with Zingana, whenever he's done this kind of trick, because I think he's definitely done this to get money, um, it's always been a case of like, there's a fake bottom to the cup that is being passed around or, um, there's, if it's on, on a table that he has had time to mess around with, he's able to subtly let the the coin drop through a crack in the table, or um, or is pretty good of a sleight of hand and just quickly slips it out from underneath the cup as he's making conversation with this person. So I think he's fully aware that it's not under any of these, or well, at least when they lift it, it won't be under any of these. Um, but how exactly it is, Ali, I guess you will tell me. But Zingana thinks at least it's a mechanical way of it being hidden away. Yeah. It's not a mechanical way, but you do think there is a magical way that is that is ha that it's happening here. Because you're like, something is off and you are you pick up on it very quickly. Okay. And then Tashwin says how much you want to bet under this shell and, and I pull out a shell different down. shell. Yeah. I think that kind of confuses Zingana because they have they're no all, reason to think it's underneath there. They're all magically connected. So we've got another better uh, on the table. You're betting it's under that one? Well, you just lift it up. It's clearly not there. Uh, is there any way that I could use spellcraft to cast a spell that would put a pearl underneath there? You don't have to do that <laughs> because the shell already will do that the magical shell that you have will take something from another shell and place it into this shell i realizing this as i put place my fingers on the shell i say all right for the crystal then and then i open it up and there is a lovely gigantic pearl there well well i don't know about that and then um they pick up one of theirs and she shows you the pearls underneath theirs. Can I oh. use one of my, I don't know if this, this spell will work, but can I use my judge spell? Sense whether an action abides by the laws and morals of the region so that you can experience the fun of policing those around you. Oh my god. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> I made this encounter specifically for that. I'm all got, for it. I see that, you know, Teshman lifts it up and it's always like I've had an inkling like, something's not right here. <laughs> so now that I've seen this, I'd like to try to, you know, get a little bit bossy about it. Yeah, I think this is not going to be an easy thing, but it's not going to be a super difficult thing for uh, you because you know, Maze, you know, you very well know Doc and their shenanigans. Um, so I think this is going to be just a challenging. Two okay. Ooh. No. No. <laughs> no. Epic. What fail. happens? It's like the seething anger from all this thing the things that i've had to deal with with my father seeing maze who was like a stable in different ways growing up kind of falling prey to it seeing zingana someone who me is like oh i think i'm vibing with zingana gambling and just having all these conflicting feelings of what's happening doc just being that kind of 
shady, slimy person that I'm used to them being. And so I'm like so motivated to try to point out what's wrong with the situation that I end up unable to actually form words and I kind of get frozen in place just by everything that's going on. Jara, you pick up on this. You're, you've are you been the most observant of the group here. I think Zagana's in the middle of gambling. Teshwin's getting involved now, trying to like fight about who has the real pearl underneath their shell. But you see all of this happening and you can tell that Mia is like just exhausted. You all right, Mia? This is... No, I, this isn't right. Like, this is just not, this isn't what life should be. I love this place, but this is just like a stain on the coast. It's ruined so many lives. It's made my life so much harder. And they just keep getting away with it. I agree. We don't have to play by their rules. We could just take Well, they're the not playing by any. We could just take the stone. I don't care. If you don't care, that sounds great to me. I bet they didn't even win it where, like fair and square. This is just what they do. Yeah, this they stuff take is all and trickery. they take and they take. Magic sleight of hand house always wins. Let's take it. Sometimes you gotta burn down the house. Let's burn it down. What do you do? Oh no! <laughs> I mean, Bonfire. Is everyone um, okay with this going into combat? <laughs> going into combat? I don't know, oh, like combat. or like doing that kind of thing. Like I, because the I mean, listen, I, I I'm holding a rock before... that makes me want to to like you know. You, you've got the vibe. That's I'm gonna. Fat, I will. Yeah. I will grab this guy and I will take the stone off him. If no one stop, if, if nobody wants to stop me, I think Jarrah starts making those kind of moves. I I think I, I I I'll grab your arm for a second and say, incapacitate them. I could send them to the authorities. Will we get the stone? Oh, we'll take the stone first, and then I'll send them to the authorities. That sounds like a wonderful plan. There's a lot of people in here, and a lot of them don't understand how deep they are in this. And they're innocent in their own way. But Doc, Doc is not innocent. I trust you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk up to this guy. All right. You walk up to her. Are you walking up to Doc? Oh, oh so yeah, up to Doc, yeah. Okay, because I thought it was like, maze or Doc? Uh, you walk up to her and what are you gonna do? Listen, I've had enough of these games. I don't care. You have that stone. You probably swindled it in the first place. Hand it over. Look, man, I want to fair and square. Maze can even, uh, you know, say otherwise. Right, Maze? I don't see a thing, single thing true. fair and square about this place. Fair and square. I lost it. I couldn't find the damn pearl. I, like, He's drunk. I, was I don't one. care what he says. Look, homie, you gotta lower that tone. Otherwise, you can't be a patron here. Don't tone police someone you just tried to swindle. It doesn't work out well. I don't care about I being a patron here. I care about anything. getting that stone and putting an end to this mess. Then play a game of shells with me. I'm not playing your can games. I, can I do an empathy I would check? Like to... oh, Go ahead. Oh, you first. I was gonna say, um... Zingana's gonna reach into their pouch and pull out um so I imagine we've yeah I mean that's how he probably he feeds tough pulls out like three kind Tough's of, gonna run down and try to snag one <laughs> uh yeah pulls out three like little bowls that he would usually use to feed like pour water in or put food in for tough and sets those three down at the table and just goes I like a rematch but how about you use these and we'll push those forward in front of Doc. Look, look, 
I like to play a game of shells. That's kind of my thing here. Hey everyone, it looks like cups. they're worried about playing the same game but with different things covering the pearl. I wonder why, as they're going to try and say this out to anyone watching and listening to this game. The same game, Look, I don't Doc. want trouble. I don't think you want trouble. I think you and your friends, Mia, need to get yourselves out of here. The, and this one, this... you got to get out of my face, man. While the distraction is happening, I'm going to... I'm going to shove Zingana a bit forward over the table and try and snag both pearls at the same time. It's a little skullduggery. All right. Let's see your <laughs> skullduggery roll. I think this is going to be not easy, but not difficult, so challenging. Let's... I only have one die. <laughs> You're doing skullduggery? Right. Oh. It's possible. <laughs> Theoretically, it's possible. Yeah, it's possible. Oh. Theoretically, yeah. Oh, oh, it was oh, so close. It was so close. It was close. It's not an epic failure, but uh, upon seeing this, um, Doc kind of leans forward because, like, Jara's in their face. Uh, you know, Zinkana's trying to confuse them. Mia's just kind of deflated standing there. And Teshwin is, like, leaning in to grab the shells. And you just feel, like, a hand, a large hand kind of land on your, on top of your hand, Teshwin. Hey, those are mine. Look, you all trying to steal my shells? Get out of here. This is my table, my shells. Stop. I'm gonna try something. Oh no. All right. What are you gonna try? Essentially, it's, I think it's, uh, Jara has a moment of clarity. <laughs> he, you know, he he's trying to go the force route, but he isn't a forceful person. He isn't like, I mean, he's got magic, but he's got healing magic. And he's trying to think like, I can't just, I can't beat a guy up. I'm not. That's not what I'm capable of. What can I do? I can talk them to death, and I want to use condescension. Rant about the minute details of a subject until your target agrees that you're correct and that they should have never disagreed in the first place. And I want to say to this guy, this is a trick. This is all sleight of hand, or it's magic, or it's some kind of thing. It isn't designed to be fair. It isn't designed to be a genuine game of chance. The point of this thing, everyone knows, uh, throughout history, is to steal from people, is to trick people. That sh wherever, whichever thing they pick, the pearl won't be under there, because you'll move it, you'll transport it, you'll sleight of hand it, you will do something. I know how this works. I'm not having it. Love that. This is going to be challenging. You've now tried to steal from this person <laughs> and you're calling them out for for being the person who's cheating I and try to steal the people things. were doing that. I'm just I've just been threatening this guy with violence. You're guilty by association, my <laughs> friend. <laughs> That's fair. Also, um again, Doc is a female. Sorry, yes. I sorry. Yeah, it's all right. No. Damn it. Oh, Three no. Three dice, nothing. What happens as as you are uh, doing this that makes it a failure? I mean, I guess I I do this, I rant, and then I do it till I run out of energy, and it just doesn't affect them. They don't care. They've probably heard this a thousand times before. All right. With that, they, I think it's because Doc has heard drunk people. You know, drunk people, they rant. They go on and on about the same thing in multiple different ways. They, like, just go for it. And I think that what Doc says next is... Look, do I have to send the bouncer this way? Because I don't know what that was about. But if anybody is stealing anything or doing anything inappropriate here, it is you all. Your little party here. Look, if you kick this us guy's out, trying I'm to gonna... steal my shells. If you kick us out, I'm going to tell everybody that you kicked out the winner of the Rippies and it will destroy your business. Ooh. I feel like there's no intimidation thing here, but charm is kind of like the best next thing I have for this. Um, and I think because you normally I would say this is a challenging thing, but because you you are the winner of the Rippies, you do hold some 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 like semblance of power here. It's gonna be an easy roll for you. Okay, I'm so nervous to roll anything. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. Ooh, yes. yes. Finally. Epic. You Except add anything else to that as, as an epic success? 
I start talking a little louder as I keep talking to Doc. So then they'll hear that you kicked me out. And I just start talking louder and louder about how their business is taking someone that is highly revered in the Coral Coast and refusing service and treating me poorly. And so I just kind of keep going on and, until either Doc kind of backs down a little bit. And then you start to hear like murmurs around from other tables and people start looking and start saying, oh, are they going to kick out? me a soul and like you just start hearing a lot of that kind of yeah. thing that is definitely the vibe that i've been i'm feeling so yeah you hear these whispers going on as eyes meet um doc and doc all of a sudden has this flesh of like a flesh of worry over them and they're like look look mia i'm sorry it just got a little way of me i'm you know i'm just trying to do my business here i don't want to kick anyone out you guys can stay at the table but you gotta like chill a little bit you know look I have been schlepping through four different small continents. I have been eaten by two separate creatures. And I've done this because I have a boy at home who should be doing it instead because a small piece of a star landed on his forehead when he was born, which is the most ridiculous excuse for sending a child on a quest I've ever heard. So please, Give us the damn stone so we can get on with our lives so I can go home and be with my child so that she can just do whatever the hell she wants to in this place so that this one can go home and not be dead and so this one can stick his nose in a book. We just want to get on with our lives and you are the only thing, the sole thing, preventing us from doing so. Do you realize how miserable you are making us and how miserable we can make you simply by our own existence because you are the only thing standing between us and the end of our quest? With that speech... Ooh, sorry. <laughs> With that speech and um, just like everything, I think it's going to be a very easy charm roll for you on this. Okay. Plus Mia already demoralize them a little bit so they're like <laughs> we'll see we'll see no oh, that, what a tease it was sitting there on that it was so That's cruel crazy. that one hurt i think yeah. like i stumble forward and like grab his sh uh shirt and i'm like crying now it's not yeah she she sees that you're crying and kind of like puts their she puts her hand like on your shoulder and her hand's pretty like beefy um, and just like lightly pats you and is like, Look, man, I get it. You all have been through some trouble. It's cool. But I can't just give you the stone, you know? Like, I gotta feed my family too. That's why I do this. I don't, I'm not trying to like take your money necessarily, but. That's exactly expensive what you're here. doing. I had to find a way to have honest work. You don't need the stone. You're standing in the way of something bigger than than everybody in this room, everybody on this planet. Madam, what do you want? Well, forget about the shells. Forget about games. What do you want? What can we trade you for this bloody thing? Well, uh, really, what I'm doing is just trying to make way for my family, you know? My wife, she's got a child on the way, and this is my way to make money. You know, making meat, ends meat. We got this little shack down, down the dock that we're just, you know, slowly making our home. I'm not, I'm just, you know, just as much as you, Mia, I'm just trying to make my way through this. Right. The only way I know how. Well, you just got the I life file? savings of this maze over here. I'm sure you'll do okay. While this is happening... Can I, is Doc the only one doing, like, hosting games? Or are there other, like, hosts, like, doing their own games around this? Yeah, there's, area? like, now that you look around, there are quite a few other games happening around. There are um, some card games that are being played at some tables, um, like, Go Fish style. Um, but it doesn't quite work like goldfish, like you think, they yeah. think of. Um, and then there's like another one where they have like these little fish in a bowl and you have to like pick which one, you know, like you can with like a little bobber thing. From 
as it's happening, I'm going to start watching the, these other games. And I would like to see if I can see the host of these games going to some back room with their winnings. Because I assume like there are some games that have similar things where you can give coin or at least in this case maze gave an actual item over in their loss so i want to like watch to see if i can see other hosts going to a specific room or door with yeah. the house's winnings i think that will be probably a perception role to kind of like assess the situation unless you have like another uh spell or something that will let you kind of like see what's going um, on here not specifically in this case of join is, is specifically like doors and stuff i'm watching the people here so i think perception makes sense yeah or empathy something like that perception <laughs> um, you're what, like i'm what, not good at empathy <laughs> <laughs> what would the I think difficulty be this will be a challenging one you do have experience but you've never been he you haven't been to the coral coast since you were a kid and i'm assuming you haven't yeah. been to the ta to this tavern necessarily yeah no okay fingers crossed no. <laughs> oh, good idea. I know exactly what but, happened. Well, yeah, uh, tell me what happens. I love it. Um, I'm kind of like surveying the area and then my eyes cross Mia and then just focuses on Mia. <laughs> and just kind of watches, uh, especially when they're doing their speech. Just like, wow, he's really pretty when she gets worked up. <laughs> you just kind of watch it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Speaking of which, Mia. Continue um, your speech. Yeah, I, I'm just looking at Doc kind of like, I'm just trying to make ends meet and saying I'm trying to help my family. So let me get this straight. You're trying to make and protect your own family, but destroy others in the process. How do you sleep at night, Doc? Whoa, whoa, Mia. I'm not trying to destroy anyone's family. You are, That's and you like did. not a goal of mine. Look, Doc. If they destroy themselves in the process. That's not my bad. My father comes to your table specifically each time. Well, he likes a game of shells. There is a point in life we have to take responsibility for who we are and what we stand for. And I cannot stand for what you do. And I cannot support you in what you do. I've made ends meet. I go treasure hunting. I started my own stall and I support my family. You could do the same. Honorable work is possible. You're taking the easy way out and you're taking advantage of people who might have a weakness. Give me the stone and I will leave this place or I will start a campaign that I've always wanted to and now I finally have power to, to shut you down. Ooh, with that speech. Let's do a very easy charm roll on that. That was great. Ah. That was. Okay. I'm so scared. If I roll bad on this. <laughs> oh my Ooh. God. Finally. Success. Do you add anything else to that? Or is that kind of like where you ended? It was a great speech. I, I stare Doc in the eyes. Like I didn't break eye contact. I didn't look away. I just kind of was like, it's me and her in this room. And I hold my hand out, palm open. And just wait. Okay. Look, Mia. If I give you the stone, will you and your group of friends and Maze get the hell out of here? Yes, and I will never come back here. Great. May, uh, uh, Doc kind of leaves the table, comes back, grabs the shells, looks at Tushwin as they do this, collects them, and then goes out. Uh. Now you see Zingana for a moment where uh, Doc is going as you then get distracted by Mia again. Um, but they are going back to a back room to go get the stone. They didn't and... even have it on them. You should have just done the thing where you send them somewhere and then we could have gone get it. Yeah, do you guys want to say anything? <laughs> we'll, they're going to grab this uh, stone for you? No. Let's be honest, all right? We're all actually a little bit mad at this point. So clearly something is happening with these stones. They're clearly separated for a reason. Maybe for a second we should be asking ourselves, what are we doing? Well, and I look over at Maze and I kind of lean into Teshwin. This is so out of character for Maze. He, he would never do this. He knows how much it's affected me. 
Zingana flirted with me. You too? Yeah. Oh. Pretty sure that they're after Jara now. Oh, I guess I read the I guess I read the situation wrong. No, you didn't read the situation wrong. They do actually like you. you but think? right now, oh for goodness sake. Look, I realize that you've had a bit of a difficulty when it comes to parental figures. But yes, you are an attractive person. You have many great qualities. Of course, he'd be interested in you. But stop for a second and think. This, this overt flirtation, this constant staring, that is not Zingana. No. Zingana is a lot more careful than that. He has been staring a lot. The hunger coming from Zingana, the hunger that you once experienced. And Jara is frankly acting like kind of a prick. It, has he always been this angry? No, he's not. I've read his letters. My point is, is that these things are doing things to us and we have to sit here and acknowledge that because if we don't think of what we're combining together think of what the cost of that might be think of for a split second what these things will do once they're bonded they didn't tell you much about this quest did they i i got barely any information i won they packed me up and sent me on my way I don't well, I told really you know. Every, I told this entire bar my story. A little bit of a star falls on my son's forehead and apparently now he has to do some sort of quest. That's all I got. They said that I was the most capable person from the coast and I have barely been able to help in the fights. I... Jar doesn't even believe in the group, but look, we made it this far. The stories Something. that we've been told about these vestiges, I... I do we even know what happens when they're all together? No. That's the thing. I've not been told a single story about these vestiges, just that they existed. It's all been negative qualities. If you're what you're saying is true, everybody who has one or who has had one in their possession, it's brought out characteristics that are not helpful or good or the right. I don't know what the word is. It's just not, it, it makes people different. Or just flavor, as, you say as that. this is. Oh. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm gonna say just as Mia says that, you kind of the camera pans over to see Zingana, looking at Jara, being like, "Has anyone told you have beautiful eyes?" <laughs> Jara is like, arms folded, like foot tapping, like just very impatient. Like, what? Like, who cares? Let's just get this done. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> kind of cute when you're angry. <laughs> I would <Nice>. turn away. <laughs> What if we as, get all this? As, oh, sorry, you go ahead. As Teshwin and Mia have this conversation, trying to figure out, like, are we doing something that we should be doing? And uh, Zingana's complimenting Jara, and Jara's like, this doesn't matter, we're on a mission. <laughs> um, you see Doc coming out. Uh, they, they are, like, walking. Their steps are kind of, like, making a lot of sound as they come out. But you do see the glowing stone. Um, and Zagana and Jara, the two of you, your attention is immediately directed towards those, um, the stone. And um, Tashwin and Mia, you as well see Doc coming that direction. I think I, will start to approach Doc. Same. I'm, <laughs> as soon as I see the two of them doing it, I'm going to look at Tashwin. I will take the stone. We need one of us with a clear head make the decision. And because the two of them are moving towards it, I'm going to stomp over towards Doc and Ooh, just right. snatch it out of their he hand. Is trying to get over there quickly and get in front. Are any of you competing in that? Or are you you're just like, oh, let, let me... I think I'm competing with Jara, I at least. I don't think I know to, Mia's yeah, coming. I'm, yeah. Jara I'm going to block... Zagana probably both trying to get there first. I'm going to block one of them. I'm going to block... <laughs> oh, God. I'm... I'm so sorry, Drac. Uh, I'm going to step right in front of Zingana and immediately kiss him. I mean, I... I with, yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> um, it works. But I, I, 
I'm going to try and dodge. I'm going to try and move right away because I have my okay. eyes focused on this. Teshwin, then, you need to roll me a charm to see if you can charm Zangana enough. Um, and Zangana, I'll let you say what that difficulty is. I only have one dice to this. It's not going to work. Oh, can I actually, <laughs> can I roll empathy? Because I'm trying to understand, you know, what will work against Zingana more than I'm trying to. Well, you're, you are actionably like kissing them to mm, get them fair. to be distracted, right? I feel like that's empathy would be more like you're trying to empathize with them and understand and more like assess their, their feelings, which I feel like that's not really what's happening here. This is not the PvP Challenging. I was expecting today. Neither was I. <laughs> kissing I PvP. Who can kiss you? That's so funny. Um, it's a way to distract I, them, I guess. It I guess. I think... I'm sorry, but it's definitely difficult because it's a combination of... Oh, that's not happening. <laughs> yeah, it's a combination of the stone make me want to get this other piece. And two, he just doesn't want to kiss you. <laughs> like, Zingana themselves, even without influence of the stone, just doesn't want to kiss you. Oh, <laughs> you did it was so well, well, though. That was a good kiss. <laughs> <laughs> so I think like you kiss and then almost immediately you're I don't in fact they don't push you aside so again I've described Zingana as uh, more of a gymnast than like brute strength they just very like you get close enough to give a peck and then very all of a sudden Zingana's past you like behind you and continued walking um, as if they somehow disappeared and reappeared behind you um, a little bit of a clue of their very clear skills as a thief um, and just continue moving towards um, Doc. Do I still have enough to try and grab Jara then? Jara, what about you? You, you have, you, are you competing against Sagana? Are you trying to get it as quickly as possible? Do you notice Mia? Mia's I, like rushing forward to get it. I think I was, I was, well, I made probably the fact that I was competing with Zingana. Like we probably started walking and then probably started striding and like, you know, we're speeding up then and then kind of jogging. Tejwin yeah. jumps in and Jara's like, huh, what? And probably gets distracted from what Mia's doing by this kiss, like this drive-by kiss attempt that happens. Which okay. might give Mia a chance. So Mia, let's see if you can beat Jara. And I think this will be acrobatics or athletics. I'll let either go. I'll do athletics because... I do have more dice in that, <laughs> but yeah, also go for it. I feel I like think this is going to be easy. Uh, you let me know if you think otherwise, uh, Jara, because that's you, very you fair. did get direct, I have direct, one in athletics and acrobatics. I like, yeah, you know, and I you're not walk, very fast. I can't sprint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think this is a moment of like, I won the rippies. I really right, and then so I'm like trying to prove myself of like, yeah. Oh no! Oh my no. god! Oh no! You don't. You don't make it there before Jara, and that oh, makes a no. lot of sense. You, Jara, you are there first. You are able to grab the stone first. Yep. Snatch it out of out of her hand. I 100% think it's because I see Teshwin try to kiss oh, uh, Zingana. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Literally, I, I go, what are you doing? And I literally <laughs> say that instead of being focused on the stone. Yeah. Right, right their hands after up. Mia revealed that they kind of like... Done as well. Touch oh. wind, yeah. Doc puts their hands up and Doc's like I'm taking the day, rest of the day off. I don't know what's going on here. And Doc just immediately turns around and walks back out. Um, and was... the four of you are in the middle of this room. There's people like looking at what's going on. It was an attempt to distraction. Alright. Clearly it didn't work. Of all the things... Oh, for good. Fine, fine, fine. Zingana, Mia actually Mia. likes you. <laughs> Literally being thrown under the bus right now. Yes, you are. You really are. <laughs> oh, um, well, I, well, I really like you. You're gorgeous and a lot of fun to hang out with. Are you yourself with... Here, can you give me one of the stones? One of the vestiges? Oh, um, <laughs> okay, I have, not right now, we, we can, we, we've got the pieces right. now, let's we just, just put them together now. 
Let's just walk out of here. Jara, we can put them together. I think you, you oh, look over two, to, to Jara, who is like s- stood just away from you, and he's got the other one out of his pocket, and he is trying to put the two that he has together. As soon as you put them close, they like, like almost like magnets together. I think Dinah would do the same as you. Good idea. And then gonna put the other two together as well. You just say magnets say- together. I think Stay like apart. Jara's like hand them over, and I'll put them all together, and we can be done with this. It's fine. I can handle it. I'm I'm one of the descendants of the original families anyway. It makes sense for me to do this. Don't, we don't even know oh, who's here. So you think you're better than us because you're son of one of the original families now? No, I just think I can actually handle this. Clearly, he's making Jara act weird, <laughs> but I can I can handle this one. Oh, nonsense, you Jara. Disaster all day. Give me the stones. Child. Disaster. I've been pretty good. I think every time we're going into trouble, I've actually managed to get all of us out of it. Can I think back into stories I've heard, like kind of try to pull from my memory, like any sort of story that might explain what would happen if these were all joined together? All of you have no clue. Okay. Do I have a gut feeling <laughs> about what might happen <laughs> if these were all joined together? You, yeah, whatever your gut feeling is, that's your gut feeling. I mean, whatever okay. Mia would feel is going to happen. I think that's what she would feel is going to happen. There's no other influence because there's no, there's nothing about this vestige other than people have been on a quest to find it for a very long time and a lot of people have lost their lives. I'm so going to walk. I start to approach Jara. I'm going to step in front of Zangana, and if you're holding it, I'm going to take my hands and put them over the stones and hold you in one spot. Let's just think about this for a minute. We we finally finish. We can just need to join them together and we're going to be done. I do the same thing with Jara, actually. Like, I turn around and grab Jara's hands. Jara, yeah. you're smart of this. Oh, for crying out loud. I love this. If I just you don't want to go home. Painting a- a little yeah, picture. <laughs> the party stands together. Teshwin holding Jara's hands. Mia holding Zingana. As the two stones on one side and the two stones on the other begin glowing less of a pink color and more of a deeper red. They've almost completed their mission. The one they were all chosen for. Mia having somehow won the rippies. Jara chosen because they would not be missed had they not returned. Teshwin making the decision for himself in order to take the place of his son. And lastly, Zingana, selected because the High Council wanted to get rid of them. They all stared down at the pieces. What happens next? Jara. Jara, you're my dearest friend. Every single time something interesting happens around me, I rush to write you a letter about it. I need you to trust me. Why would I lie to you? Listen, if this is something bad, then at least it'll happen to me, and I try and push Mm. past. Are you going to try to stop him, Tashwin? Yes, I am. All right. That's How are you going about stopping them? I'm literally going to start, like... I have my hands on his hands. I'm going to start crushing his hands and pushing him backward. Just f- all physical body strength. All right. Athletics, that is. And this is difficult. Understood. Oh, wow. That's bad. Ooh. Oh, no. You try to crush his hands. But what happens, Jara? I feel like he's met with an amount of strength that Jara probably shouldn't be able to summon he's absolutely determined to to push you past and somehow even though he is a you know pretty skinny dude who's an academic all his life he manages to beat you and just push you somehow uh, and move towards Zingana please please Tashwin pleading as Jara pushes past Mia, what do you do to try to stop stop Zingana's Zingana's moving towards Jara? I just, as I'm holding the stones, like his hands holding the stones, why don't you stay here at the Coral Coast with me? We can go and we'll throw these oceans into the deepest reaches of 
caverns, anything. So just get rid of these or hide them somewhere. I don't think anything good's going to come of this. Let's leave the old behind and let's start chapters in our lives new, not with whatever poison these are. That's a charm roll if I ever heard one. And that's going to be at a difficult. Oh, no. <laughs> I have two dice and charm, man. <laughs> possible. It's still possible. Mm, oh, not good enough. come on. Dice. What happens, Zingana? What happens as Mia tries to tell you that you can get rid of these? You can, we can hide them somewhere. We can have. We can start a, a new life. There's a moment where Zingana kind of face kind of softens at the mention of just staying here together with Mia um, and he kind of sighs you know I want to stay here with you and we can but we just need to put these together once we finish I there's going to be prize money from the highlands we can use that to start a life here and we'll I think as they say this how I'm going to like flavor me getting past them is that very um as um he's talking Mia would like look down to where the stone should be in his hand and you see its hands are empty and tough is bouncing along with it in their mouth as when you turn around to look at tough Zingana is quickly by tough's side almost again without he even hearing the footsteps along the wooden floor and picks Can I up I was gonna say, can I try to stop tough? Or is it too late for me? <laughs> no, this is this is this was your moment to stop the situation. Um My as tough, tough goes very forward. quickly throws it up again and Zingana catches it in his hands. Zingana very practiced. It. Yeah, it's like a thing that they've done many times in Zingana and Jara. I walk forward and just like out in front of me holding the stones ready to meet. Do you do the I... same, Zingana? Zingana, I think this is a combination of the stone's urges and just, I think, the life Zingana has led. He's going to try and snatch the other path as well from Jara so he can combine it himself. Ooh, I love it. Skullduggery, and I will let Jara pick the difficulty of that. Mm. Um, let's put what? it just in the middle challenging. It's like, because top priority is putting the stones together. Jara would really like to have them, but it matters slightly more that they're together and so he won't be fully resisting that. Okay. Either way, you would have got <laughs> it. Epic success. <laughs> As I grab, just very, very suddenly, very quickly grab it out of your hands, Jara, no. and put them together. Perfect. As the pieces are placed together, one, two by two, they suction to one another like magnets. Once placed together, they look almost like a brain, pink stone with countless tiny veins of red flowing through them. The area around them begins to go blurry, as the camera can see flowing from Zagana and Jara a radiant light emanates from every vein along Jara's skin and from the horns of Jara or from Zingana and every and the horns from Jara. A wave of elemental magic siphons from the markings on Mia's face and Teshwin begins to float into the air, the markings on their face slowly peeling off their face and the Gravamancer magic combining and funneling into the brain-like vestige of Vecna. Everything around them slowly losing its magic. The camera pans down. Out into the depths of a crypt, where a cavern is deep under the caves, as we hear a voice, a familiar voice, that of Silar. <laughs> Finally, she has awakened. And that concludes the final episode.
of Vagna's awakening. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> Are we all the show dead? title works really well now. Did we die? Oh. <laughs> Are we dead? Oh no. Were we sacrifices? <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> like, I, it, Are we the first kinda, sacrifices? It kinda, yeah, it kinda sounds like they gotta sacrifice one from each place in order to uh, resurrect Vecna. Do you want like the, the spoiler a little bit of what? Yes, I do. I want to know if if we all die. I don't want. I don't want to. I think we have the spoiler off camera, so oh, everyone no. in the origins can still try and figure it out. You enjoy yeah. your cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did we all live happily ever after? <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Like we, like we didn't. Oh no. <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, thank you for watching. <laughs> Thank you for watching <laughs> Fable Crowd Factors Awakening, sponsored by Rift Weaver. Um, currently in development, uh, w watch their spaces. They're uh, actively working on it. Like, literally, as we've been doing this show, improvements have been being, like, obvious improvements have been being made to. The yeah, they thing. made some improvements to the combat. They've done some camera work on things, so soon. Like literally mm. every, every week, it's uh, they're improving it. I'm so excited to see like the, the the final product and just how much stuff it's gonna have in it. It's gonna be really cool. Um, they even added some ambient sounds that I used, like the waves that were crashing and like yeah. the the kind of creepy little sounds in the woods I used as well, which was fun. Yeah, it was so cool to to see because we we got some we got some super early looks as well when we were like planning the sets. We got to see like the whole so many stages. And, like, oh yeah, so it was a totally stages. different game when Bentham and I saw it last year, so it's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very I'm very excited. There's obviously there's links everywhere, all that stuff. You can go to the website, tons of information, and uh, you'll see it at some point in the future, um, on on PCs and tablets and maybe some other devices as well. Um, this has been awesome. Thanks so much to Riff Weaver for letting us do this. It's been great. Um, let's talk about where you can find everyone. Um, let's start today with uh, Drac. What about you? Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Damn it. Damn it. it he went through the whole away. episode. Not just <laughs> the magic, voice, the voice took too. Took voice. Like um, Ari Ariel. Um, Ariel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was about to happen at some point. Um, hi, I'm Drak or Draconics. You can find me on Twitter at Draconics. That's D-R-A-K-O-N-I-Q-E-S. Same old spiel. Um, TGRPG writer, producer, performer, everything and anything TGRPG related I am doing or will be doing. Um, I did play Zingana for you. Who knows if I'll ever play Zingana again? Because who? what happened to him after this? I don't know. Um, but that was a ton of fun. I know. is... Uh, <sighs> so nervous we're gonna find out off camera all of you never get to know maybe um <laughs> but yeah no i'm that was a lot of fun i'm really stoked to see what else fablecraft like if we were put out with fablecraft because they've like they weren't kidding they literally made quite a good amount of improvement in the week between our recording sessions it's wild yep it's awesome uh the person whose uh, region we were visiting today uh, mia katie Hello, I'm Katie Peters Plays. I played Mia Soul uh, for you. Again, don't know what happened um, to us. <laughs> so it might be the last time you see Mia. Um, but uh, you can find me on Twitch at Katie Peters Plays. Uh, I do a lot of tabletop podcasting and streaming. So come say hi to me the next time I'm live. And this makes me want to dye my hair this color. It looks really it looks good. good. It yeah. seems like too much maintenance, <laughs> but yeah, overall I do enjoy it. Someone who had purple hair for like eight years, I loved it so much, but having to redo your roots, it's like so expensive. It's like stupid. Yeah, that's why I I'll just keep, I'll live the dream with my wig. Now I have this. So. <laughs> that's why I own like 300 wigs. <laughs> uh, all right, and a werewolf. I'm muted now. Hi, my name is Nathan <laughs> Lee, uh, also known as Werewolf uh, or Werewolf Feels on the interwebs. That's where you can find me. I'm in the Atomless Starfinder podcast. I'm in this playing Teshwin for the last time, uh, maybe. And a few short hours, I'll be back on Trooper SGP's channel, Academic Foxhole, playing Vampire the Masquerade. Last session was Halloween. And we had to deal with the aftermath of the death of the prince. We all know how that happened, I think. So, uh, I wonder what's happening next, because I'm terrified. Will will, uh, will Nichols become the mayor of Detroit? We don't know. Anyway, I'm just 
I love this game so much. It was a lot of fun playing Fablecraft. It is always a great time to be here on Roll4. And just like Haiti, I now have a strong urge to tattoo my face this. I'm not going to. <laughs> but you're, yeah, it looks awesome. I know, right? The dedication, I love it. Definitely my favorite uh, like <laughs> character aesthetic, the whole the sky you were born really under. Stunning. I love it. I love it so much. The the cultures of every one of the races, even though they are humanoid, is like really cool. And mm -hmm. hopefully we were able to do them justice with our story and showing all the different areas yeah. off. I keep saying I want to see a, a sunset born uh long strider so that you get the, the sunset on, on the face. Apparently though, that might exist. I don't know if it's if they've if you can find it anywhere yet, but I'm told it like exists. That. I, I'm looking for for it's the one who was born like an under an overcast sky and it's just a band of gray <laughs> or like I, under I, a red moon. The British That'd representation so... is a, is the, is the clouds. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Just rain clouds. <laughs> and of course, our wonderful GM taking us on this uh, stressful journey, Maggie. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was <laughs> great. It was great. In a good way. It's a yeah, great no, kind good of stress. stress. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it was. It mattered, which um. was why we were stressed. <laughs> Oh, I feel like because from the GM perspective, sometimes you're like, are they having fun? Is this fun? I don't know if this is stressful or fun <laughs> or like what it is. But um, again, I just want to shout out to Rift Weaver. Thank you for creating Fablecraft and letting us explore the world of Mythos. We didn't I mean, there's so much more that we didn't even see, like the fishing villages. And like there are towns within like the woodlands that we didn't get to explore yet. And just so much and so much that you can you can you can play with in the lore that's really the cool stone and dragons even... there's really cool creatures like the stone dragon all you can see dragons. one actually if i all the dragons look awesome on the um, top right he's yeah, made of one. rocks I can, and i love it <laughs> i can drag a couple of them onto the screen here if you want to click on them and show them a little bigger but look at um, this. i don't know if it will but they yeah, look amazing yeah. if you go to their website check it out it is amazing so really lots of love to them and of course I'm Margaret Crone. If you like what you saw today, um, I do a lot of DMing as well as I often am a player for the most part. So I think DMing stressful. Um, <laughs> but um, I will be over on Bub Talks every evening on Tuesdays. Um, so if you would like to check that out, that starts at 5.30 p.m. Pacific. And then I'm also on Roll For It 10 a.m. Pacific every Thursday with Val Torn right now. And then, you know, we'll have more stuff going on. And I have some secret projects that We've been recording, but are coming to fruition at some point. Um, so if you're curious about those, just stay tuned at Margaret Crone and all the places. And I make games and video games. I'm currently working on a project called Ashes of Creation, and you can find it at Ashes of Creation and all of the places. What about you, Bentham? I am Bentham. You can find me here on Rolfert doing stuff uh, all the time, pretty much. You can maybe find me on other channels doing other shows soon. Everyone's got secret projects right now um, <laughs> that have been like recorded and they're just waiting to, to come out. Um, and then you can find me doing personal streaming uh, Baratrom on Sundays with friends at the moment uh, and other cool stuff uh, like that. And uh, that's pretty much it. And this I sent you awesome. all nice DMs this time. Nothing <laughs> <Thank> traumatizing. <you. laughs> I feel, feel like better. every episode I'm like, I send you a traumatizing message. <laughs> you don't, you Maggie don't have told, to be filled Maggie with rage. That <laughs> in the message, if I'm reading this right, Drac, you are now in real life just forever hungry uh, so I'm gonna be eating. mood um, that's me that's mine that's a mood I'm forever filled with rats <laughs> i was gonna say forever lustful but i was like that's not too different i guess uh, so. <laughs> also if uh if we didn't die jara like the agreement was only that mia doesn't return to the establishment jara is going to return and destroy it with bureaucracy that's that's the plan. <laughs> yes. yeah i was gonna say if we got out of there i was gonna say i'm shutting this place down. <laughs> <laughs> just immediately do the imprisonability and just <laughs> tear it all down. Okay. Make it a prison. Oh, it was, yeah. That was so cool. Like, all of it. I love everything. Yep. Yeah. It's fantastic. I had a ton of fun. Um, and that's it for Fablecraft Factors Awakening. We'll see you next time. And ne yeah, next, next thing we do. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Bye.